Hello class, this is Mr. DeVoe Peterson, and let's take a look at chapter nine in your wireless networking book. Um, and this is kind of the meat of this, this whole class is designing a wireless network, understanding all the parameters and the equipment and the need and how do you put all that together in a plan and then um, set up the wireless network. So um, we're looking at probably the part that we might want to be tempted to skip that is very critical and that is understanding what the business is going to use the wireless network for and that you know that includes how many devices and how data intensive are those devices like uh, surfing the internet is quite small but you know processing video or doing voice over IP phone calls where uh, the integrity of the signal is quite critical and and hard on the network a lot of data is traveling Maybe it's a big database application that's being used, and that takes a lot of resources. So knowing the needs of the users on the network and how many users, and do, do they need to travel from one part of the, the building to the other? Is that involved in this? Asking those questions. And what, what that does for you is to let the users know that you're listening to their needs, what they want to use the network for, and um, and, and then once you once you then implement it and deploy the network, if those needs change, and this is the part that kind of protects you in IT, you've already had meetings with the uh, key folks that are using the network that explain needs to you and what they require for the network. If those needs change and that is not communicate with you, well, then you've done your job, but the users haven't, the, the, the stakeholders, the ones using the network haven't clearly communicated the needs to you. So it's really critical you document and talk to the users. And the book talks about that a little bit, but as far as saving your career, always document what the, the needs are of the users uh, and have it uh, understood by the stakeholders and, and you. So if they change, well, then you get, a, you, know, you, you get the resources you need to add more access points or whatever is required to make your, your system more robust because their needs have changed. So um, I wanted to touch on that. The book just touches on it a little bit, but it's all also, you know, CYA. <laughs> Cover yourself in this process that makes sure that you've done your due diligence to find out what the network's supposed to do. So you talk to the users, you get their sign off on what the, the network will provide for them. So a couple of different types of surveys, you know, for smaller type installations a manual survey means you walk through it and there's um, uh, two different types of manual there's passive where you just you don't have users online doing the network you're just looking at, at uh, signals and propagation of signals and strength in different areas and then there's uh, another type of manual type of uh, survey that's active where you have users and devices using the network so you can analyze the packets and what's what's crossing the network and seeing how things propagate properly from you know the whole range and coverage of the radio frequency that you're you're responsible for the other type of uh, survey that you can do is a predictive modeling survey and you may need to do that if for whatever reason maybe distance location you can't get to the site and do the walkthrough and use um, uh, uh, tools like spectrum analyzers to look at what signals are in the the range of the wireless network if you can't get there physically then sometimes you have to do a um, a predictive model and that's where you need that's where you need the floor plans of the building you need the wall materials uh, where furniture is uh, especially you know metal furniture like file cabinets and office type equipment you might see ceiling heights door material is it a solid door or a hollow door glass windows all of that information gets fed into a software program and, and the map of the of the facility, the site, and and then uh, the software analyzes what should happen with the wireless signals given all the phys physical structures that are included in the map that goes into the survey and the information you provide about materials and things like that. That's a predictive model, and you might use that for a very large installation. You probably will hire a company to come in and do that. Most uh, businesses with uh, an IT, uh, some IT people probably aren't set up with all the hardware like spectrum analyzers and things like that 
to do that kind of planning. So don't don't worry and think that you have to do it. Um, okay, and then the chapter ends up with uh, a little talk about channel architecture, and I think you really already understand that. You know, 2.4, you got 1, 6, and 11, or 13, whatever, I guess 11, and that don't overlap, right? You wouldn't put channel 1 next to a zone and the, and, a, and channel 1 in the, in the adjacent zone. You would separate them over non-overlapping channels. So, okay, so wireless site survey. Let me jump into this. You look at um, the, the radial frequency coverage. How big is the building? How big is the zone? And if it's quite large, you may need more access points, right? Uh, any source of, of, of interference and, you know, the big ones are the microwave ovens and power supplies for fluorescent lightings and things like that. Maybe you have wireless cameras all over the place. <laughs> Those suck up bandwidth quite a bit, uh, especially if there's 4K. Um, where are you going to put the hardware? You're probably going to have power over Ethernet, so you don't need electrical outlets, but you need an outlet for you know, where the, uh, the switch is located and the wiring closet and things like that. So you're looking at the environmental conditions. Let's see, big part of the survey, when you talk to the, the stakeholders, the users uh, that are using the wireless network is to find out what that intended use is. And are they ha uh, high bandwidth applications? And then how many devices, right? It's not uncommon for users to have desktops and laptops and cell phones and bring your own device and all kinds of things. Uh, let me jump into here. There's a nice little schematic showing, uh, you know, there's a, a guest network. You see those at uh, coffee shops and hospitals and things. Do you provide that? Yes or no. And then it's segmented off and kept away from the main wireless network. Uh, and I highlighted a few things as I went through this chapter that I just want you to kind of remember is the, the bandwidth requirements and the type of applications and how many devices are just key. I went to a Google I.O. event at the Moscone Center in San Francisco where they gave us access points and uh, uh, cell phones and tablets and so forth. And there must have been, oh gosh, 6,000 people in the Moscone Center. And, and they added access points for the facility, but we're, our bandwidth was dead. It was shot. Way too many users. We couldn't get on. It was kind of a bad experience. Um, and this is showing an, an example of a general office. We have six access points in there. And, and the intention here is for it to coverage the whole building and don't go past the walls too much, right? Um, let's see. And here is an example of a checklist where you're kind of documenting with the users what will the network be used for, right? Really key. Uh, here, let's see, what else? What's real critical here? PoE. I mentioned that because it's not uncommon when you have an enterprise type deployment and even some home and small office ones where you don't have an outlet to plug in the access point. PoE just means for power over ethernet. So the cable, the, the unused wires in the cable provide electricity for the device. Uh, floor plan is an example of one. You may or may not need it. A drawing can do, a sketch can do. Uh, here's an office showing, let's, see, where are all the access points? We've got a couple access points here. Uh, these must be, they must be cabled. Uh, let's see what else. Power requirements, physical size. I just want to hit home. Those are really key. How many, how big is the location for the radio frequency coverage? How many devices? How many users? What software is going to be used? Those are kind of key. Um, here are some things. <laughs> that users and employees may want to bring <clears throat> bring to the business to connect to the network. So that's critical, like voice over IP. I'm going to skip some of this and jump. I want to get into, here we go, the spectrum analyzers, because that seems kind of mystical. <laughs> and it's, it's a device you can buy or rent, but larger, larger um, tech companies may have them. You may contract out to get them to come in. But this is just telling you this these 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 are the signals that it sees right it analyzes everything that's on the wireless spectrum right that's uh, on the wireless channel it shows you what's out there you may be in, in um, uh, an apartment complex or you may be inside a mall and there may be other businesses and their location of their access points may be causing interference that you're not aware of so the spectrum analyzer, and this is a really good example because it's it's portable, it's on a laptop, it's a special antenna with software on a laptop that you can you know, walk around with or 
push on a cart to look and analyze uh, it using your schematic or drawing as you move through the building all the different signals that can be causing interference you know the microwave in a lunchroom is a big one and and then the chapter goes through and talks about what those signals are and what they look like and i think there's one here this is the microwave one so like a little mushroom there when it's all full power um, and then the rest of the chapter goes through and just walks you through installing all of these types of applications don't worry too much about that just know they exist um, and i think that's the big part of chapter nine they walk you through and let's see am i missing anything that i want to touch on i'm going to skip through some of this uh let's see this installing software again don't worry about that here's an example of an access point mounted and, and there's a concept called an access point on a on a stick where you walk around and you have it up in the ceiling and you you actually test once you do your plan you actually test with the actual equipment and suggested locations how well is the coverage before you permanently mount those access points there you give it a test and you may do something as basic as an app on an Android phone that measures um, the signal strength in those locations. I, I did an installation where there was a cinder block wall inside the building and outside, and the signal would just not, it would just not uh, uh, go through the porous material of the cinder block very well. So we had to be careful where we placed those access points so that where the intended coverage area is, there wasn't cinder block between that area and the access point uh, where it was mounted so moving it around testing it i think the book talks about putting it on a ladder this is a pole mounting it up in a ceiling so you test you test it before you permanently mount it and this is showing okay a passive survey where you're just you're just listening for the radio frequency the coverage area and then the active when you got some equipment running and data happening okay we're installing we're installing things here Here's a map you're running through here. You're looking through coverage from these access points. Uh, manual site survey. And I think uh, predictive modeling is real critical. And the main thing here, you know, there's there's manual predictive for the site surveys. The manual, you do the walkthrough. The predictive, you have software. And it's really critical that the information be thorough and accurate that gets put in this software program for it to do a good job to tell you and to predict how well the coverage will be and where the access points will be. And I think I'm going to stop there. This talks about different types of uh, 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 planning software programs. They're not cheap. They, they cost a little money. Uh, they're not cheap. And I will, I will stop there. All right. Read the chapter. If you have questions, please email me. Let me know. All right. Good luck.